Today on Alphacraft, I'm building this simple village church based on an Anglo-Saxon design. But first, let's do some quick warm-up building. That's probably the last lot of shops. I may still add one right at the end. We'll see. I'll see how I'm going. And I have found the advent calendar over at Spawn. But I'm going to do a special Christmas episode and we'll do the advent calendar then. I'm doing it, but I'll show you what I got then. But today, this is what we're here for. The church. I have, I'll run up here, I have marked it out. There we are, that's the layout. It's only little, I wanted to do something that dated back to Anglo-Saxon times. So I'm going to get all my stuff together. We're going to make a church. Right, I'm ready to go. I've got most of what I need. I haven't got anything for the roof, but we'll get to that. Now, this is just a little church. I've made a decision about the town. So we've got all the industrial parts down there. We've got the train line. We've got the posher bits coming in. And we've got the shopping area. This is going to be a much older part. This is probably going to be the side of the original village. So we'd have had the church in the middle. I'm going to do some older style houses here. There would have been more here. They've been replaced with shops. Life in the big city. It happens. What doesn't change dies. So this is quite an old church. Now, Anglo-Saxon churches and Celtic churches weren't the same as churches built on a Roman or Orthodox base. So, as you can see, there's no transept. If you don't know what a transept is... I mean, you've probably heard the thing about Christian churches are built on a cross shape and you've got two sort of wings or um, sticky out bits at the top that form the arms of the cross. They're the transepts. Don't have that on these. So the church was divided into two parts and later on they added a third. We have got our third there. So the two parts were the nave and the chancel. Now I'm starting on the nave. The nave was the responsibility of the congregation. So they paid for it or they gathered the supplies, they got it built. It was up to them. And we have an entrance which is normally on the south side. So that's what we're doing. And the churches were tall and thin, which reminds me that would be a good idea. So we've got long and shorts on the corner. Let's have a look at that for height. Uh, probably one more, maybe two. We'll put one more on, we'll see how we go. Right, we've got the height set. Let's go for the walls. 
Now I'm just using a mixture of cobble and smooth stone. The congregation would have provided or paid to be provided what they could manage. Now I might actually just take that out and I'll start with just doing the walls in cobble and we'll see how it looks. Now here's the other thing, there weren't a lot of windows. I'll be doing some sort of arrow slit windows which will be quite high up. Because glass was expensive and hard to come by. We take things like glass for granted, we really do. Have a look at that. I uh, wish I could have like a brick that was half cobble, half stone brick. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? Never satisfied. <laughs> okay, we'll do another one here. That'll balance it out. They were often irregularly placed, so I don't have too much trouble with it. If you see a church that dates back to Anglo-Saxon times and it's got Gothic arch windows in it, they've been cut in later. Now, I might come back at a later date and do that. I'll see what the light's like in the church and how I feel about it. Yeah, that's okay. I still might put another course of stones at the top. You know what words I'm about to say. We'll see. I'll think about it. <laughs> All right, time to work on uh, the other wall, I think. I'll get the other wall up and we'll see where we go from there. There we go, one nave done. Yay! <laughs> the roof is not as steep as it should be, but the trouble is if I do one block, one stair one block one stair you know the really steep roofs in Minecraft it's too steep so we've just got a lower pitch on the roof than we should have it's nothing I can do about it I've tried mixing in some andesite for a bit of texturing I don't think that looks too bad we'll come around this side yeah I don't think that's too bad it's not great uh, I think we need one about here. There we go. Yeah, it's not so bad. And I might put some mossy cobble in yet. I don't know. You have to imagine that these are, you know, one long, one short, one long, one short, all the way along. If I'd made this out of smooth stone, it would look like that. But I wanted something a bit rougher. <sighs> so that's our nave done. No roof as yet. I'll just roof the whole thing. We've got our entrance here. Entrances were generally, I need some more, entrances were generally on the south side. Not always, but generally. Uh, yeah, and then it should be fine for a roof. If they weren't on the south side, they were on the north side. Because once we get the roof on, that won't look so bad. Orientation was really important. Now I've got to put a floor in here. I'm just thinking flags of some sort. Uh, should just be compressed earth, but that was then. This church has changed with the times, which means I probably will knock bigger windows in. <laughs> so now we get to this part. So this is the nave, which was the responsibility of the congregation. This is the chancel, which was the responsibility of the clergy, built by them or more likely commissioned to be built by them. They had the money, so it tended to be a bit posher. Depending on the parish, it could be quite posh, or it might just be just that little bit better. Maybe the people really liked their priest, so their stonemasons did a bit of dressed stone for him. Or maybe there was a lot of money to hand and he got whatever he wanted. Now the chancel's where the altar's kept 
and it's the, as I said, it's the priest's domain. It's considered a very holy part of the church. It's not for your average congregation member. It's also supposed to be shorter. All right. It's also supposed to be shorter than the nave, so I think we'll knock that one off and that one off. Yep, that's a good height. Now, here is where you would find windows. Probably against the eastern wall, but you might find some in the north and south walls. Now, why was it important to have the chancel at the eastern end of the church? number of reasons. The first, which was the stated reason of the church, be it uh, Celtic, Anglo-Saxon or Roman, was that Jerusalem was in the east. Now we might just go with smooth stone and again we might mix a bit of andesite in. And I'm definitely, definitely putting a block the wrong way up. Ugh. I'm definitely doing it again. Right, third time lucky, I'm definitely putting a window in. Yay! Okay, now uh, we've got this wall. Now, even if you couldn't orient your church so that the chancel faced to the east, Got to get more stone. Whatever end your chancel was at was called the east end. So maybe you had to have it the other way around. It was the west or maybe it had to face north. Didn't matter. This end was still called the east end. Go figure. Do we want three windows or do we want one? I think we will go with three. All right, that could be a dog's breakfast. Let's have a look. It is a dog's breakfast, but I know why. Oh, now I've got to go all the way round to the entrance. Oh, well. That's better. Not as good as it could be, but better. I have just had an idea. I keep forgetting that we've got the lovely changes to walls and glass now. So we are going to do this. Yeah, that's much better. And we'll take out that. We'll take out that. And we'll put these in instead. Let's have a look at that. Voila! Not 100% certain about up here, but the rest of it looks better. Once we get some glass in, it'll all come together. Right, that's our chancel end. This will have a raised floor and the altar will be there. Now this, this is a third component. The third component was added quite late. It's a tower. The really old Anglo-Saxon churches, the ones that have survived because most of them were made of wood. We're just lucky some of them were made of stone. The really old ones don't have towers or they had towers added later on because as the Vikings became more and more of a threat, people needed somewhere to be safe and the church tower was often it. So I'm going to build up this tower and I'll get back to you. So there's our church. It's more or less done. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I've started working on the churchyard. I haven't got far. But we'll begin over here. This is the lich gate. It's a bit wider than I wanted, but it looked too small. 
when I made it just one block wide. So one or three, I've opted for three. Now the lich gate was where you bring the corpses through. Uh, lich is actually the Anglo-Saxon word for body, not necessarily for corpse, but for body. It was originally spelt L-I-C. And if you see I-C at the end of a word that's of Anglo-Saxon origin, it was originally pronounced I-C-H, so itch. So we've got the lich gate. Through we come, we've got a little path, and we come into the church. And yeah, there's no pews. I will be adding pews. I just wanted to show you right now because this is what it would have been like. No pews. Everyone came in and the congregation stood. The priest also stood. Everyone stood. And yes, this is bare walls. But I want you now to use your imagination because it wouldn't have been bare walls. This would have been lime washed. Now I'm saying lime washed rather than white washed. It could have been white. It could also have been pigmented. So there could have been a colour in the lime wash. Either way, once it was washed over, there would be paintings all across the walls. Symbols, images, saints, intertwined vines, everything meaningful, but also colourful. When the Reformation came, the churches were whitewashed. Those that had escaped during the interregnum, they went as well, which seems awful, but it's actually acted as a preservative for some of these, and they're starting to be uncovered in churches in the UK. Uh, the earliest one I've seen is, um, oh, what was it, 13th century? So that's 1200, so that's in the Norman period. But there's pigments remaining in churches so that they know that this was done earlier than that as well. So the church was a riot of colour, which brings us to the other reason that the chancel was at the east end. Now, stained glass in Minecraft, yeah, it is what it is. It's <laughs> We've got flat colour. We're lucky to have it. Yay. <laughs> I could put the Vastin resource pack on because they have different patterns for the stained glass, but I think we'll leave this in vanilla. But yeah, this was the other reason that the church was at the east end. Oh, perfect. The sun's setting. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to put shaders on and I'll be back and I'll show you. Ah, perfect morning sunlight. So everyone has to start their day with mass on days of worship. And there were lots of those. And they come into the church and this is what they come into. Now remember, lime washed walls covered in paintings and colour. And then coming through this window is light that is also coloured. That's why it faces east. So that you begin your day bathed in this glorious coloured light. Now remember, the world outside... Yeah, you've got greenery, you've got flowers, you've got all the colours of nature, but you've got nothing like this. Oh, the light coming in through the roof too. Mm, may need to get up there and have a look. Tylers didn't do their job very well. Okay, and I think this is actually the real reason why they face east. I think Jerusalem is the excuse to make sure people get the full light effect to begin their day. But there we are. And yeah, the inside of the church is a bit dark. I've got a sunken floor. Uh, I'm going to have to take that up for pews and then I'll see what I do. But we also have the tower. So in the event of Viking attack, and wow, there were lots of those. Uh, I need to put lamp lanterns in here. In the event of Viking attack... The whole village could come up here. I need one, two, three more ladders and a trapdoor. I'll go grab them. Oh, I'm really happy with that. It's a good little church. And if you're wondering about that, 
because I know that looks weird, I'm trying to grow a particular tree. Took a leaf out of Fix It's book. Ha ha. And we've got a fantastic view out over the town. I know this tower should be taller, but I think this is close enough to Piggy's biplane. <laughs> Pocarasso! But this would have been the tallest tower in the area, and you could certainly see down around the river um, both ways, so you could see if there were invaders coming, and you could see render distance isn't great today. I like it up here. So I've still got a fair bit to do on this. I have to put gravestones in the churchyard. Um, I'm thinking of maybe putting a rood in. That's R O O D, which means a cross. Because before people started building churches, they would put up a cross somewhere in the village that would be the meeting place for services. That's where the cleric would address them all. And then when they sort of got their acts together, they would build a church next to the rood. So the really old ones have got a rood somewhere in the churchyard, so I'll have to put one of those in. Oh yeah, we should come around this way. And I'm aware I'm rambling, I'm sorry. That's the chancel end of the church. It doesn't look too bad. Could look better, but Minecraft, meter square blocks, I don't think it looks too bad. But I'm sorry to be a bit rambling. <laughs> I get so excited about things like this, architecture and history, woohoo! Uh, I don't have me running around with shaders on, I might do this for a bit. And, oh yeah. There's our shops. Got to work out what they're going to be. Got to do the interiors. I know what that one's going to be. But there we are, one church. Don't know what I'm going to do next. Have to think of something. While I'm thinking, there's end cards on the screen. So you can click on one of my other episodes. Go have fun. And I'll see you next time. Bye.